May I introduce to evangelist Mark Fulmer from the great city of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They're going to bring forth the word of God tonight. Quite a few years ago, I uh, was putting a puzzle together. And I finally got down to the last piece. The last piece wasn't there. The, and, it were, and, you know, it couldn't have been a corner, and it couldn't have been off to the side. It had to be right exactly in the middle. And without that piece, it wasn't complete. It was unfinished. Another story goes like this. I had a really close friend, really good friend in high school. And he rebuilt a motor in his car. And when he came to school Monday morning, he was killing mosquitoes. It was smoking so bad. <laughs> I mean, the trail was just like, you know how you see them guys in them drag strips and they burn the rubber and it's, he, he wasn't burning any rubber, he was burning oil, baby. And I said, I come out there and I said, what's going on? And all oh, stink. <laughs> And the whole town smelt like oil. Brother, I mean, it was oil everywhere. And I said, what is going I said, I thought you rebuilt this motor. And he said, I did. And I said, what did you do wrong? He says, I forgot to put the rings in a couple of the pistons. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, what? He said, I forgot to put the rings on. I got so excited that every other cylinder, I forgot to put the rings on the pistons. Amen. If you don't put rings on pistons, when you start the motor, it sucks the oil right through, right past the wall of the piston, and it shoots it right out the exhaust pipe. And there was oil everywhere. And you know, sometimes, sometimes in our Christian life, you're missing some pieces in your own life. Your walk is not the walk that was supposed to be. Your walk is not complete. Something's missing, and you know it, but you don't know how to fix it. Amen. You don't know what is quite touching, what is quite happening, but you know that every time that you turn around, the devil's right there, and he's right on your tail, and he wants to pick on you all the time, and you're sitting there, and you're going, I don't understand what's going on. We get a pen and piece of paper out. We write down everything that the preacher says. We get our Bibles out. We mark it in yellow. We mark it in red. We mark it in blue. We circle this. We circle that. And we still can't figure out what piece is missing in our lives. My wife and I have went through more torment. I couldn't believe the torment that her and I have went through these past eight months. I mean, we've had some medical problems like you would not believe. And I laid in the hospital bed, and I was so discouraged, and I said, something's wrong. Something's not right. Something is just not clicking. There's a few of you, maybe all of you, that something's missing in your life. And the reason why you're having problems is you're not fully prepared for what the devil is doing to you tonight.
Some of you are sitting here and you're not quite hearing everything I'm saying because you're so distracted by the things that's going on in your life that you fully can't receive everything that God has for you tonight. Deep down in some of your souls, you're going, I'm just not quite getting the fullness of what Christ has for me. I just can't quite pinpoint what the problem is. I just can't quite pinpoint what the situation, I just can't quite pinpoint what's wrong with this picture. So let's turn to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Hope I got that right. Ephesians chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Verse 13. It says, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes... You may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Let's back up here. What's it say there now? Therefore, put on the full armor of God. I prayed about this message. I, 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 I tried to get away from this, but there's a few of you that don't have the full armor of God on your body tonight. And it's hurting you. It's taking you away from your, your, your steps in Christianity. It's, it's taking you away from, from the nearness of God. Draw, God says, draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. That means when I walk towards God, I get closer. But let's face it, some of you haven't got your shoes on. And there's some things that you're trying to walk on and you can't do it because you're not fully dressed. Some of you don't have the full armor that sets upon your body. Yeah, old well, Brother Fulmer, you just don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Hallelujah. I understand clearly. I know more about this than you do. I'm 15 years into the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for any praise on that. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Any minister can make more than 10. <laughs> you need a little pat on your back, brother. <sighs> because I'll tell you what. I had a man come up to me and he said, he said, what's your name? I said, Mark. He says, you know, he says, and he don't know me from Adam. He says, he says, man, he says, you look like you've been just beat. And here I am. I'm all happy, man. I'm all happy. I'm getting ready to go do some fun things. I'm getting away from all the church, from all, I'm on vacation, and this guy comes up to me and says, you look like you've been beat. <laughs> and I'm clear down in Missouri where nobody knows me. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith. I said take up the shield of faith. How many's got some faith around here? How many believe that Jesus died on the cross? How many people believe that there can be miracles? How many people can believe that there can be healing? How many people can believe? Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
But there's gifts. But you ain't going to get them. You know why? Because you drop your shield of faith. Brother, you just don't understand what I've been going through. You don't understand the things that I've had to deal with. You just don't understand. My coon dog, the coon dog died the other day, and it's just depressed me. We find excuses for everything and anything to drop our faith. And here's the biggest problem. You know why we have problems with faith here in America? We can buy anything we want. You can, I'm sorry, but you could be the poorest person in the world, and you can still go out and buy anything you want. You can do anything you want. You got so you know you go you go over to any of these other countries, and they're trying to just take and get a little handful of rice and one egg to feed five people. But let me tell you something. Here comes the truth. Ain't a one of you including me, that can't go to McDonald's and have five hamburgers for each person. And we'll hog them down. It shows on me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we lack faith. We say we have faith, but we lack the shield of faith in our lives. So therefore... Oh, yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I do. And we stand around and we praise God. And God blesses us. Man, God was just, he was a, didn't you feel his magnificent power just a little while ago? And it's still here. But you see, you have received the full Power because you're dropping your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows from the evil one. Man, I laid in that hospital for 10 days. They were, I, they were, they had morphine hooked up on me, and I was, they said, buddy, anytime you want to hit, just hit the red button. Ping, ping, ping. And I, and I, all of a sudden, about the sixth or seventh day, I called, I think I called my dad, maybe I didn't, I don't know, because, you know, and, and, I, and I was praying to God, and I was, I was lifting his name up, and I was still just like, oh, man, what is going on? And I hit, kept hitting that button, because I was in a lot of pain. And all of a sudden, I woke up long enough, and I said, Jesus, if I get out of here fast enough, I'm going to kill snakes. I'm going to kill snakes. I'm going to go out and I'm going to kill some snakes. I got out. Boy, you're, boy, I tell you, when the devil, see, if the devil can't get you mentally and spiritually, he'll take you physically. Now it's time, now, and, and, and I looked at that as I was just going through a spiritual battle. But I also realized that I had to come above that. I had, to get, I had to get that faith. I had to get that shield up. I had to start preparing myself for a battle. And if you don't realize what is happening in your life, if you don't realize what is actually attacking you, if you don't realize... You take your shield and you just, well, let the morphine take care of this. <laughs> take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit. Whoa. Now, here's where we have a downfall. People get saved, and that's the end of it. They say, well, praise the Lord. Pay my tithes. I'll sit down here and I'll mind my own business. Bless God. Wasn't that a great service? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know the Lord's got gifts. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. He said, put on the full armor. Put on the full armor. If you're not praying in the spirit, you're not putting on the full armor. Uh-oh. And here's the thing. Pray in the spirit on all occasions. All occasions. With all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind. You're going to get a warning. You're getting a warning. Be alert. And always keep on praying. Keep on praying for all the saints. With this in mind, be alert. Be alert. It says, be alert. That means in all occasions. Pray in the Spirit for all occasions. It'd probably take me about eight hours to tell you everything that's happened to me this week. You need to back the pastors up in the church. Thank you. Come on, folks. Let's get a reality check here for just a second. 16 years. 16 years, right, John? Pastor John, Pastor Linda, between all the 16 years. Let me tell you something. When I was in Missouri, this guy looks at me and says, what's wrong with you? And I said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm happy. I'm on vacation. He said, now get this, the Spirit of the Lord told me that you was a pastor and you're hurting. I looked at him and I said, where'd you come from? What are you talking about? He says, I just want to tell you that it's going to be all right. Now, folks, I had my hunting gear on. I had my camel hat on, my camel shirt on. I had my blue jeans on. I didn't look anything like a pastor. No cross, no nothing. This man comes up to me and says, man, he says, you, you, you look. You. I was like, Lee, you know, I almost was like, I kind of looked up and I said, Lord, okay, what's this all about? Have I got another situation? Put on the full armor. Put on the full armor. Put on the full armor. Where's your walk today with Christ? Is there something missing? Is there something that's just not quite right? Is there something going on in your life and you're able to control? That's it. Maybe. Maybe it's an armor problem. You see, 
you can you can you can walk around with the word just like this all the time. No, no, this is big enough. The word's big enough. I got this. Is it? But if I don't carry the shield of faith, if I don't have the breastplate on, if I don't have the helmet of salvation, I'm not fully dressed. I'm not totally prepared for war. So I ask you tonight, how prepared are you? How prepared are you tonight? Where is your actual walk with Christ? I like to look at it like this. Are you hitting on all eight cylinders or are you just hitting on four out of eight? Have you only did half the job on the on the rebuilding the engine and you're blowing oil out? And what here's the kicker. You know that puzzle I put together? Did I actually tell you the ending of that? I was so disgusted, John. One piece missing. I was so proud of myself, John. It took me three, four days to put that puzzle together. One piece missing. I was going to take a picture of it. I was so, and it was actually the man's eye. This is back when my grandmother was alive. This is a long time ago. This is, this is like 20, 25 years ago. I was bored with life, boy. I'll tell you what. And she said, here, my grandmother, she loved to read the Word of God. She, you'd see her at 3 o'clock in the morning sitting on this, on this single bed, and she'd be having her Bible open, and I'd come walking in at 3 o'clock in the morning. She'd say, I'd say, what are you doing, Grandma? And she says, I'm reading the Word of God. I said, <laughs> And she, I, I was going through some, some things that most people shouldn't have to go through. And she took and she had this brown little table. But I got that table and she folded it out and she says, she says, grandson, she says, you need some stress relief. I went and bought you a puzzle. A thousand pieces. It's difficult, but you need something to divert your mind. My mom and dad was in the Philippines doing the ministry in there. And I put that all together. One piece missing. The eye of a man. I was so enraged. I took and opened up the box. I shoved it all in there. Put the lid on it. And I said, there. And I let it fall on that table. I turned around and I looked over there and there was the peace. <laughs> Words can't express <laughs> the colors of red that came on my face. My, my, my. <coughs> I said, Grandma, I just put that puzzle all together, and I said, and there was one piece missing, and I said, and it was. It was the piece because the eye was on the piece. And I, I, I said, Grandma, Grandma. And she said, Grandson, that's what you're supposed to learn. It takes all the pieces to complete your life. Sometimes I think she just threw that piece over the side just to do that to me. But is there something missing in your walk with Christ tonight?
Is there something missing that's keeping you from receiving the actual fullness of what Christ has for you in your life? Is there actually something? Is there a piece that's laying on the floor and your eyes are being put over by scales and you're not seeing the final piece? You see, it only takes one piece to make you incomplete. And if the devil knows that that's the one piece that's missing, he's going to take his cut. He's going to take his cut. And trust me. And when he takes the cut, he'll throw another piece out. And you'll say to yourself, huh, what's two pieces? I still got Jesus in my life. still take and go to church. I still jump up and down and worship and praise the Lord. And then something comes along and another piece. And you say, that's only three pieces. Think about this. This is how the devil works in your life. And then there's that day, brother. Hallelujah. There's that day where he takes and he hits the top of the table and it just goes, it just shatters. your walk with Christ tonight? How many are you actually prepared? How many are you actually ready? How many are you actually fully dressed? And if you're not, my suggestion to you right now is you need to get up here. Because if you think you got it rough now, If that devil ever hits the top of that table, if you when you backslide, it's seven times seven harder to get back to where you're at. That's true. And when that table gets hit, and then pieces. So what's it going to be? Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.